Welcome to Curator with a Camera. Today we're going to look at one of my favourites at the National Railway Museum, which is Bauxite Number no. 2. So this is Bauxite Number no. 2, the little tank engine that sat tucked in the corner of the railway museum in amongst all these glamorous, large, mostly express passenger locomotives. Bauxite was built for industry and it shows. Built in 1874, it's kind of drab, but when you start looking at it, you realize it's got a fascinating history. So this little engine allows us to tell a story of industrial railways. Steam locomotives were in industrial use, really, from very early times. Industrial railways were effectively unsung heroes of the railway age because you didn't really notice them. You had all the glamorous mainline locomotives uh, pulling their carriages and people talk about the Royal Scot and Flying Scotsman and so on. But in the background, industry was driven on steam and the steam was little engines like this pulling trucks around which had come off the main line to feed the furnaces or whatever the industry was that was requiring raw materials, in this case bauxite, which is what you make aluminium from. Bauxite number two used to work in an aluminium works in heaven. And you can tell that because it's got aluminium handrails. Basically start looking at it and you realise it's had a hard life. Let's start from one end and go to the other. Saying hard life, well, just look at these buffers here. The front end of these buffers clearly has hit something very hard on this side and on the other side. They're big, dumb buffers. They're not sprung in any way. So they're designed to actually push wagons along, wagons of different heights and round very sharp corners. And then when we look at the, the chimney, for example, and here's the chimney. Now look a little bit closer at the bottom of the chimney and it's clearly been repaired. You see the way these plates are, it's clearly been repaired. They haven't bothered to replace it with a new one. They've just told the blacksmith, can you fix it for us? And of course he has, he's fixed it for them. It's got a little um, front lamp bracket. The front lamp bracket there is, is fitted so that you can go onto the exchange sidings and put on a northeastern lamp because Hebburn you know, is on the Northeastern Railway at the time. And, you know, it would have gone into the exchange sidings with bauxite, collecting bauxite to go to the smelting works. The front of the smoke box itself, again, it's got dents in it. Um, just showing the kind of hard work this machine has done in its life. As you go down the engine, you realize bauxite number two is a very crude industrial machine. When you look at it, no frills, I ain't kidding, no frills, because let's look at the, the wheels that drive the engine. I mean, this one down here is fine, but all it's got is a sand pipe down there. So it's got a sander that's producing sand to make the wheels grip. But there's no brake attachment to the front wheels. There's only brakes on the back wheels. Down here, there's the brake pads at the back. So it's only braked on the back wheels. It's got an injector on the side. The injector is uh, to put water into the boiler from the, 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 uh, the tank. It's a saddle tank. Here's the saddle that goes over the boiler. And there's the injector. It's a Penberthy injector. So it's an American injector. And it's clearly been retrofitted. I think it's a polite way of putting it. Because look at the pipework here. It's, it's like... Um, kind of industrial plumbing really that's kind of been mashed up to make it work um, and only this bit is brass this this is clearly steel the only thing on it that's really decorative nicely decorative is the works plate that tells you who built it black hawthorne and company in gateshead um, which is not really very far away from where it worked uh, in 1874 and the name looks very faded because all they did was they varnished it. When it went into preservation, to preserve it a bit, they put a bit of varnish on it. So it's got this kind of crazing from the varnish along the top there, which means that with further conservation, 
you could bring back its original colours, which is quite unusual as well. So it clearly has not been repainted for a very, very long time. So we've had a look at the outside of this little locomotive. Let's have a quick look inside the, uh, the cab of the locomotive. It's only small, so I'll squeeze my way in there and try and show you what there is to see. So here we are in the cab. It's not the easiest place to get into because none, back in the 1950s, the Science Museum fitted this little fence so that public couldn't get in it. And we're going to have a little look at the controls in here and get a sense of what it would be like to be on this in the, its working days. So the controls on this are very simple. Um, as steam engines go, you've just got your reverser here, which is you know forward and reverse, and you can pull it into mid-gear if you want to stop. And you've got your regulator here, which is put steam from the boiler into the, um, into the cylinders. So that's faster and slower, really. And then you've got a gauge glass here, which is designed to show you how much water there is in the boiler. You've got a um, pressure gauge here, it shows you how much steam you've got in the boiler. You've got your, your whistle uh, here. And you've got a handbrake here. That's all you've got, a handbrake. So you, to stop it, you, know, you can pull it into reverse or you can wind on the handbrake. Probably you'd be running with the handbrake just slightly wound on so that it's rubbing just a bit. So it's very easy to stop by just pulling it on. Behind the handbrake, you've got a spare um, shunting pole that's down there. Shunting poles were really quite important. They saved lives, really, on our three-link system uh, because it meant you didn't need to get between the buffers to unhook a, a wagon. You've got this plate at the back here, which you can see, which enables you to, if you take the plate off, it, may, it enables you to get uh, fire irons into the fire if you need to rake the fire around. It also enables you to run with, a, with an old coal wagon attached where you've taken the, the end of the coal wagon off so you can use it as like a locomotive tender. Um, there's the, the firebox here um, with the fire old doors. The fireman would just keep shoveling coal all day, though it's quite possible it was just the driver did it, basically. The driver drove it and fired it. And then out here, when you look out here, you can see uh, along the boiler, there's the, the filler for the, the tank on top of the boiler. It's got like a dustbin lid on it, really. It's very crude. Almost the only decoration is that chimney with its kind of nice cowling on it. And here's the safety valves on top of the boiler. Nothing is lagged on this. There's no, no tape of any kind. Um, and there's the sprung for the safety valves. So it's a very, very simple machine, but if it's pouring with rain, which of course it sometimes does in the Newcastle area, you can pop inside the cab and stay warm and dry. But other than that, there's no sophistication to it. There's no wood on the floor. There's nothing on the ceiling. Um, it's full of hard edges. So beware, be careful, because it's not going to help if you hit something hard with a hand or a head. So it's a rough and ready machine, but it's like a lot of Britain uh, in industrial times, rough and ready on the railways, got the job done. So what you stood in front of is a representative of all the industrial locomotives there ever were, thousands of them one stage in the UK. And it shows that hard working side of railways in industry that's often forgotten. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this episode of Curator with a Camera, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.